one of our missions to Berlin, we had 48 planes. It would be 16 above the bombers, 16 with the bombers, and 16 below the bombers. And the bombs below would dive bombs straight, mostly straight gun emplacements gun where we should have the bombers. So we had a mission of that sort of thing. And uh, when the lower group would exhaust their ammunition, the next group would go down and so forth. They had a well prepped plan. But anyway, on the way back, I noticed that I was flying over a German airfield, and I noticed these planes sticking off the landing. And I said to my group commander, I noticed some activity down there. He says, go down and take a look at it. Take your wingman down and take a look at it. So we were 15,000 feet. I put it straight down. Last time I looked at my airspeed, I was doing 500 and shutting all over the place. But anyway, I latched on to this plane that I had seen. And it was one I had never seen before. It was a Messerschmitt 262, a brand new German jet. And he was preparing to go up and attack the bombers on the way home. Well, I kind of changed his mind about that. <laughs> I started firing short bursts at him. And at the same time, the ground gunners started firing me. <laughs> and there were pressures going over my canopy. But I was so low that they couldn't shoot down because they didn't hit the guy or the gunners on the outside of the field. So anyway, I, I belted him in, cracked him up, and then all the helicopters, because they were free to shoot at me at will. And so they all opened up on me, but you know I never got one yet. In fact, throughout my whole career, flying 66 missions, I wish I got the Stingers Flying Cross War and other things going into flak, I didn't get one hole in my way. Now that was luck. Not, the guys who did, however, didn't make it back because especially in a Mustang, if you get a hole in your plane, they've got coolant in there, and uh, your engine will stop after about 10 minutes because the coolant will be dropped. <clears throat> so anyway, we were anxious to get back and see our pictures that our gun cameras had taken. So I confirmed that I had shot him down, had good pictures of it, and maybe on the Discovery or History Channel, you've seen those guys shooting down things. I'm sure my film is in there somewhere. Another important thing is, and this is getting back to the girls, <laughs> we had a dangerous escort mission planned for that night with the ladies. We call them dangerous escort missions. <laughs> so we had to get back and get cleaned up and go into town. We did our best to try to take care of the worries of war. It wasn't, it wasn't funny though, really. A lot of times, yeah, we were in rooms with three guys, and a lot of times your roommate would just not come back. You never knew what happened when he didn't come back. Sometimes you saw what happened. But generally speaking, if we were hit by flak, I was flying with uh, a commanding officer one time. I was radio relay. I, I was the guy that relayed messages from our commanding officer to the bombers and tell them what we were doing and ask them what they could do to help. Anyway, I was flying along, and the flak hit the where it just polarized. Now maybe you've seen on the Discovery Channel or the History Channel a B-24. It's a one I see often where it, a black hit the plane, the wing of the plane and just peeled off and the guys went down. Each time a plane got hit and went down, you started counting parachutes because they had to count ten and they didn't all make it. And many times it didn't count to ten. However, this was just the way war was. I, I didn't like war, and I, it was impersonal to me. I didn't see anybody getting hurt. But I know that when we flew up and down uh, railroads and shot the locomotives and bits, hit army transports, I knew somebody was getting hit. They'd all jump out and get in the ditches when we flew by. And uh, anyway, it was very impersonal to me. Oh yeah, Huey Lamb. My good friend Huey Lamb, he was one of the ten guys that went in with me. You know, only two of us came out and went from Shrewsbury to. And he, he lives in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. And he's a good friend of mine. I talk to him once or twice a week. He's my same age. And uh, anyway, we, I told him about this meeting today. He said he wished he could be here because he'd like to ask me a question. What did I do when I went to London all this time? 